This presentation shows how to perform the Johansson co-integration test on eViews. I'm Pat Obi, professor at Purdue University Northwest. Now recall that when time series are integrated of the same order, as in the example of this presentation, I1, we can proceed to run the Johansson test of co-integration to check if the variables have a long run relationship using the system model that you see right here. Right? And um, to do so, we're going to go quickly I've summarize the process right here and some of the initial out, uh, uh, dialog box and output right here. So we're going to go quickly to eViews to demo it right there. So here are our two variables, exchange rate and oil price. And if I click on both together, right click, highlight both, and then right click, I can open them as, um, as a group. And you see them right here. Anyhow, so what we're going to do is to go to quick, and then we go to group statistics, hover your cursor right here, and then move it over to the right and select Johansson co-integration test. And you're going to type the variables in the order that you wish them to appear. Um, in this case, by default, the computer is giving me exchange rate first, space, and then all price. All right, so by this arrangement, I'm positioning exchange rate as my target variable. So otherwise, you can type it in yourself. All right, you can just go ahead and do FX space oil. There you go. All right, and then, um, and that's it. You click OK. Now, when you click OK, you're going to have to choose um, the number of lags that you want to use for this uh, analysis. Now, recall that we already have shown how to use um, the lag length criteria to select the optimal number of lags uh, for this um, process. And we determined that two or three lags is, um, is what we want to use because the criteria um, recommended is about five or six of those recommended um, either of those two numbers. So all you got to do is to come here, delete that four, and type two if you want it to be two lags or three if you want it to be three lags. So like I said in the earlier um, presentation, I, I like two lags. If that don't work, I can always come back and switch it to three. All right, so now I already have determined in my unit root test that uh, the series um, require only intercept, no trend, right? Because I didn't quite see any discernible trend in exchange rates and all price. So I'm going to leave this as is. And um, it's all go. We click OK. All right. OK, I'm going to just click Yes so we can replace that with outputs. So here's the output that you see here. So now let me um, expand this so you can see it good. Now recall that the null hypothesis is that there is no co-integration between the two series, meaning none. And when you uh, look at the uh, unrestricted co-integration uh, rank test right here, which is also called the trace test, uh, you find that this null hypothesis, right, that there is no co-integration is definitely rejected at the 5% level. That's the p-value right there. As well, if you go down here, the unrestricted co-integration rank test um, based on maximum eigenvalue, also called the maximum eigenvalue test, does reject that there is no co-integration as well at the 5% level, as you can see right there. So these results suggest that we do indeed have a long run relationship between our two variables, exchange rates and oil price. Now, notice that the next hypothesis right here at most cannot be rejected. And that's because the p-value is greater than 5%. So this tells us that we have one one co-integration, uh, one co-integrating equation, meaning that we do have one error um, term in the model, and that's what you see right down here. It says that trace test indicates one co-integrating equation at the five percent level as well. The maximum eigenvalue test indicates one co-integrating equation at the five percent level.
Now for good measure we can also inspect the long run co-integrating uh, equation itself where exchange rate is positioned as the dependent uh, variable. So if we scroll down here a little bit you see this normalized co-integrating uh, coefficients with standard error in parentheses. So this is really it right here. right? That's it right here. Now uh, be careful to know that the sign of the um, coefficient is reversed in the long run. So really this should have a negative in front of it. So with a negative coefficient it means that in the long run falling oil prices are associated with rising value of the US dollar and vice versa which is consistent with uh, um, recent empirical evidence that suggests the persistence in the inverse relationship between the US dollar and crude oil prices. And uh, based on this standard error right here um, we can determine the T statistic by dividing this coefficient of 0 0.003008 by this value and uh, that's going to come up to be a close to 8 and of course at any conventional level of significance we're going to have to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that truly there is a long-run relationship between exchange rates and uh, oil price. So in conclusion, the Joe Hansen co-integration test has confirmed that the two series exchange rate and oil price have a long-run equilibrium relationship. So given this outcome, um, we um, can then proceed to run the uh, vector error correction model um, to examine how deviations from the long run are corrected. And this concludes this presentation.